Hi, I had a request for a video on non-operating assets and how they fit in with valuation. So here it is. First of all, what are non-operating assets? Non-operating assets are things that are not part of our normal operations. So for example, cash and marketable securities in excess of what is needed for our business operations would be a non-operating asset. Unused land, maybe land that we're purchasing for potential development, but we haven't actually made any decisions with it yet. That would be an example of a non-operating asset. Any non-utilized assets, so maybe we have some factory equipment that we're no longer using, but we haven't made any decisions of what to do with it yet. That would be an example of a non-operating asset. Loans that we're waiting on being paid, those are non-operating assets. If we've made investments in other companies and we own shares of their stock, that would be a non-operating asset. So these are a few different examples of primary classes of non-operating assets, things that are going to show up in valuation, but not necessarily the way we would normally do valuation in a discounted cash flow basis. So why do we treat them separately? The answer is because they're not part of our ongoing business operations. They're not creating cash flows consistent with our ongoing business. Therefore, when we forecast our cash flows, we're trying to think about what things are impacting our business revenues, our expenses, our cash flows, and those are not going to be related to these non-operating assets. So we're going to maybe look at cash in excess of what is needed for business operations. If I need $10 million in cash to run my business, but I have $20 million in cash and marketable securities, then half of that is not being used for my day-to-day -day business operations. It's just extra that I've got set aside. So it's probably earning interest, but that interest is not correlated with my business. It's not going to increase as my business improves or decrease as my business gets weaker and therefore I don't want to try to for include that in my forecast of cash flows or if I think about land that was purchased for future development maybe I don't have a specific plan for it but I'm thinking someday as my company gets bigger I want to be able to increase that until it's developed or incorporated into our operating assets it's going to appreciate or depreciate based on similar land. And again, that's uncorrelated with my business operations. So if I'm trying to forecast my cash flows for the next few years, that land is not going to have an impact on my cash flows. So when I'm doing discounted cash flow analysis, I'm trying to forecast the cash flows associated with my business. And these non operating assets are not really part of my business. So if I'm treating them separately, how do I treat them? Well, first of all, I'm going to forecast my cash flows from operating activities just like I would ordinarily. I'm going to reduce that by my capital expenditures. So I'm operating my business. I'm generating cash flows. Some of those cash flows are reinvested back into the business, property plan, equipment, new products that I'm coming out with whatever my capital expenditures are. Maybe I'm a restaurant chain, I'm gonna open some new stores. Maybe I'm a factory and I'm gonna purchase some new equipment. Maybe I'm a manufacturer and I'm gonna start a new project. Whatever it is that I spend money on for capital expenditures, that's going to get pulled out of my business before I get my cash flows available to investors. Once I have my cash flows for investors and I forecast those out for the next several years, and that's an open question. Do you want to go out three years of year by year cash flows? Do you want to go out five years? Do you want to go out 10 years? Ultimately, the business, if it's a going concern, is going to exist beyond three years, five years, or 10 years. So you're going to have to estimate a terminal value at some point as well. But part of the discounted cash flow model is you forecast your cash flows you discount them back to today 
and that tells you the value of the company. But now what we're doing is we're talking about the value of the business, and then we're going to add in the value of the non-operating assets that we separated out. Those were not part of estimating our cash flows, their additional value. So we're going to add them in at the end after we've estimated what the present value of our operating activities are. Then we add in non-operating assets to reflect the total value of the company. Now, this creates some practical issues. One of the first is I mentioned how much cash do we need for our business operations? In my example, I said we had 20 million in cash and only 10 million of it was needed for business operations. But how much do you really need for your business operations? Could you operate with 9 million or could, do you need 12 million? And that's going to change a bit based on your operating activities. And so this is not a real precise measurement. I have a hard time pulling out cash because I figure if the company has cash on hand, there's probably some reason for it as to why the company has that cash. Otherwise, it would get rid of it. Now, there may be some reasons like a safety measure or potential war chest or things like that. But then again, if you're using those as part of your business strategy, don't they reflect part of your operating assets? So I have a real hard time with the idea of separating out cash and treating it separately. That's a personal opinion. There are people that do both sides of this. So some people separate it out. Other people just ignore it. I tend to be on the idea for cash and marketable securities unless it's very clear that this is extra money held set aside that's not part of business operations i tend to just ignore that and not treat it separately does our unused land or non-utilized assets have strategic value that we're going to unlock so for example if i purchase land that i plan to develop maybe not this year but two three four years down the road and I'm forecasting cash flows out for the next 10 years, isn't that land going to be incorporated into my cash flow stream at some later point? Probably yes. So I have to think about what are these assets doing? Why have I not gotten rid of them? Why am I holding them on my company? Whether it's land that I'm planning to incorporate, maybe to expand my headquarters or to open some new businesses. Why do I have that land why is it not sold? What am I planning to do with it? If I'm not selling it, then that implies that there must be some reason that I'm holding on to it, which would make me question whether I want to treat it separately or not. And again, this is a judgment call. There's not a clear answer. It's one of the things with valuation is you're going to find lots of judgment calls that you're going to have to make the choice. It's one of the reasons why stock prices move so much and why you can ask 10 different people what a stock is worth and get 10 different answers. There's not clear answers to all these questions. How about our loans? Are they loans that just come about because we've lent somebody money? Or, or maybe they're part of our customer service position. So is our loan something that we're using to retain or acquire customers? Maybe they don't have the cash on hand to buy our products. We make them a two-year loan, and when they repay that loan, part of it is repaying the loan, but would we have had the sales if we wouldn't have made them that loan? So how do I separate what part is really operating versus non-operating? So these are some of the issues that you face with non-operating assets. Ideally, You'd want to separate those out and then add in the net realizable value. So what are you getting after taxes, after disposal costs, things like that? How much net value are they coming in separate from your business? But it can be really tough to figure out, are they a core part of the business? Are they going to be a core part of the business? Are they not necessarily a core part of the business, but they help you operate your business. Separating out, is this truly a non-operating asset or is it part of our operating assets? 
becomes a tough judgment call and a difficult part of the valuation process. Thank you.